All right, what's up guys? I'm back with another video here. We're going over tricep, chest, and shoulder exercises today. Now these are things that I don't feel will be redundant. I feel they'll be useful to you. Um, however, I'm not going to go over everything like a rope push down with cables um, or lateral raise with dumbbells. Either everybody knows how to do those or it's a very easy thing to look up and it's very hard to get wrong if you look up a couple videos on it. So. I don't want to be redundant here, or I'm going to go over the stuff that I feel like I need to explain more. So the first one of these is a band pushdown for triceps. It's like you're using cables, but you're using a resistance band instead. So hopefully I'm in frame here. You can pick any resistance band. Now, remember, the thickness and the width of the band determines what tension it is. So I would, I would recommend that you start out with a lighter tension band. Uh, something like this as opposed to this blue band um, or even you could use something like this TheraBand. It's more like a warm-up band but this is actually set up pretty well. So essentially is you're, what you're going to do is you're going to wrap the band around some type of loop, a uh, pull-up bar, uh, really anything that's up above eye level, uh, right? And then you can hold the band at different places to get different amounts of tension. So if I hold this band way up here and I try to extend it's a little bit harder that way than if I hold the band all the way down at the bottom, right? This I could just rep out for days. Um, so the tension of the band itself matters, and then it's how you set it up and where you hold it when you do the exercise. But the key is to treat it just like you're doing a cable exercise. A lot of control, right? We're keeping the elbows pinned into the sides like somebody's holding it here and you can't move it. And you're only moving from the elbows. Locking out, coming up, locking out, coming up. Just like that. With the band pushdowns, you're going to do a lot higher reps than normal, too, uh, depending on the tension of the band that you grab. So I usually do anywhere from 20 to 50 in a set, just depending on how I'm feeling on an, and what setup I have. So the next exercise is bodyweight skull crushers. Now, you're going to have to give me a second to set this up, but I'll show you what I'm doing along the way. So first off, we're going to find a bar that is adjustable in height, um, and, and, and that's what we're going to need for this exercise initially. So, the height does matter. Um, basically, the higher you have it up, the easier this exercise is going to be, and the lower you have it down, the harder it is. Um, so this is just a tricep extension, just like the one I just covered with the band, but you're using your body weight to do it instead. So you may see these uh, called other things too, but I call them body weight skull crushers, right? Um, we'll go over another kind of skull crusher in a second here. So with this, once I have my height, I'd recommend you start somewhere, maybe chest or even shoulder height, just to feel it out. We're going to take a close grip on the bar. Um, so I usually try to split this inside of the knurling, uh, right between my middle and my ring finger. That's a pretty close grip for me. Um, I'm going to go a thumbless grip. That's typically a little more comfortable, lets you have more motion through the wrist. And then I'm kind of leaning my body back here, right, as if I'm in this pseudo plank position, right? As I do this, I'm bending my elbows forward and getting my head just under the bar, and then I'm pressing up and extending just through the elbows again. So bend, extend, bend, extend. Now you want to make sure that your elbows are going forward and not out to the sides. That can be dangerous uh, for the smaller muscles of the shoulder if you do that too much uh, or with a heavy enough resistance. So close grip, elbows forward, get under the bar, get that good stretch on the tricep, and then lock out all the way. Um, so Basically, the reason this, this is more difficult or less difficult depending on the height is, for example, if you lower the bar from this position, I have to get my body at a deeper angle, essentially, just to complete the exercise, right? And if the bar is higher, I get to be at a higher angle. So it's like doing push-ups on a wall versus doing them on a floor um, or, or doing them with your feet back up on a bench. Um, the angles matter because gravity matters. So essentially that's why it's, it's harder or easier depending on the height. So another easy way you can set this up is if you have a Smith machine in your gym, uh, which is one of the uh, 
safer uh, uh, ways to do it because it's kind of set in in one plane of motion uh, and you can just pick up the bar kind of unrack it slide it up to where you need to rack it and you're good uh, but this works just as well with the barbell it works just as well at your local park you find a railing you can do this under whatever you you can find really so those are bodyweight skull crushers now um, this next one I'm gonna have to move this stuff around again give me a second so this next one if you'll excuse me is a straight bar skull crusher so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and show you this with the lighter bar, smaller bar, so I don't hit anything. Make sure you're lined up. All right, hopefully that focuses in. So this one is much the same as the bodyweight skull crusher. Same motion as the last two movements. It's a tricep extension. The only difference is I'm moving the bar now instead of my body weight. So again, we're taking a close grip, we're laying back on a flat bench probably. <clears throat> I'm bending this back until it touches my forehead. Yes, it should be touching your forehead, every rep. Gently, but still touching. If you're not touching, you're not going low enough. You want to get that stretch a little bit on the triceps, and then extend all the way. The key is that you're not moving anything else other than the elbows here. I'm not doing this like a bench press. Right? I'm not pressing. I'm just keeping the elbows back at this angle, bending and extending. Simple enough, right? Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what else. Alrighty. Fun one now. Dumbbell pullovers. Now we're kind of moving on to the chest area. This exercise is technically for um, the serratus muscles which are like the inside of your armpit or the inside of your lap. They, they go right here. Um, but we're going to categorize this with chest exercises because it's the closest thing. So we're going to lay across the bench for this one, perpendicular to it. So here's the bench. Here's you. Okay. So across the bench, we're going to get down here. You can either have someone hand you the dumbbell or just put it on the side and then pick it up here. Now, this is dangerous for me because I got these dumbbells with fucking, you know, pointy things on the end that might impale you. So, <clears throat> getting the shoulder blades on the edge of the bench here, we're keeping our hips low, and we're kind of coming back, really stretching out the rib cage, the lats, uh, the shoulders up here, right? Big breath in. And then I'm going to come back, exhaling and squeezing with those serratus muscles right here inside of the lat or the front of the lat, right? So stretch back, keep the hips low. One more time. Back. Okay. All right. You just do that kind of thing. The worst part of this exercise is getting in and out of it. So if you can do that, you'll be good. All right, perfect. Dumbbell flies. <clears throat> I guess I'm gonna have to use uneven dumbbells here. Um, I'll show you this way. Yes. <clears throat> so basically, dumbbell flies for the chest. A lot of people get these wrong. I know this is like a pretty common exercise too, but I see a lot of people doing these wrong. When you get back here and you're ready to do your fly, you never want to go into a big T shape like this. You don't want to go so wide and so high with your arms and elbows that you're making in yourself into a T-shape, okay? You want to stay low like this. Stay low, pull the shoulder blades back into the bench, tuck those elbows in, and you'll feel a way better stretch on the chest and not just the shoulder. So here, low, and then squeeze. Staying low, as if I'm making not a T-shape, but an arrow shape. My head is the top of the arrow, right? It's pointing back behind me. Stretch and squeeze all in the chest here. So you can keep your elbows bent, but make sure you keep them at the same angle the whole time. 
You don't want to be moving around and extending up here and bending back here and extending, right? Same angle. Stretch and squeeze. Simple enough. Okay. What else? Rear delt fly. Um, all right. Dude, let's see. Here, I can show you with the fives here. Because this is one of those exercises that you're not going to use a lot of weight on. If you are, you're probably doing it wrong. So, I don't know exactly how to show you this one, maybe from the front. Rear delt fly. You guessed it, for the rear delts. Um, a lot of people do this one wrong, too. I see a lot of people using their upper back too much. That when they bend over and get in this position, and they come back, they're squeezing everything they got in the upper back and they're turning it into an upper back exercise. So that's why you might see people using a lot of weight on this. You're probably not doing it right. What we want to do is actually keep the shoulders, once we get down in this position, keep the shoulders rounded forward, right? Like you're hunched over. Once you're in this position, you're maintaining that position for the whole exercise. So I'm not going to be able to get up as far but trust me, if you do this, you're really going to feel it in the rear of the shoulders. The other key is that on this one, I am coming out in a big T shape. Not like the flies. The flies, we were going back here. This, round forward in the shoulders, keep the lower back straight in big T shape. Trust me, if you do it this way, you'll feel it every time. Okay? So... Last one is an Arnold press. So you can do this standing or seated. Um, this one I'm gonna I'm gonna do seated just because it's better for the, for the camera angle here. So tighten this dumbbell up. Still working with uneven dumbbells, but no big, big problem. A normal shoulder press, you're gonna start with your palms facing outward, right? And maybe a little bit of an angle here. You're upright and you're just reaching and pressing up. With an Arnold press, you're starting with your palms facing inward as if you just completed a bicep curl. Okay, so this is your starting position, palms facing you. As you press up, you are also twisting out, out, palms in, palms out, palms in. Okay, so this simultaneous, this fluid motion, twisting out, and pressing up. And then twisting in and coming down, right? That's the Arnold press. The reason we do that is so that we can involve the medial delts, the side deltoids, a little bit more uh, than a normal shoulder press. So this one you're going to feel more. Um, you might, uh, might be able to use more weight. You might use less. It kind of depends. I would just focus on the form and kind of feel it out. But you will feel these in a different way than you'll feel the normal shoulder press. It'll be like a combination of shoulder presses and lateral raises, right? All over on the front and side of the shoulder. So you can do these seated, you can do them standing up. Just make sure if you're doing any standing pressing exercise, you really have to focus on keeping your core tight, your glutes tight, upper back tight, so that there's no injuries to the spine, the hips, etc. right? Especially when you go heavy. So I think that's about it. Um, pardon me if it's kind of a rough take. Um, I'm just trying to get this out there for you guys so, so that you don't have to rely on other people's videos or questioning yourself whether you're doing an exercise right. Um, I know it can be difficult sometimes and, and I'm here to help with that. So more to come on this. I think the next uh, uh, video I'm going to do is going to be the last part of hypertrophy or, or muscle focused exercises. And in that one I'll do what I can to show you um, quad, calf, and ab exercises. So other than that, guys, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, and take care.